Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This week's video we're talking about distortion again and how weld metal shrinks and I got a couple of examples that will really illustrate that and then also a technique on sequencing the welds on a really common joint like a 45 degree miter joint. What welds do you do first? What direction do you go? What gives you your best chance of having this thing perfectly square when you're finished? My buddy Roy Crumrine will show you how he does this on a stainless steel part which stainless steel to tends to warp and distort a lot worse than carbon steel. So we got some good arc shots and techniques on that. Also welding a box cutter blade to demonstrate the effects of shrinkage of weld metal as it solidifies and cools off. Enough talk, let's, let's get into it. All right, this will be very obvious to some people, maybe not so much to others, but this is a cool little demonstration on the effects of shrinkage stresses on a, a, a joint. So I've got a couple of box cutter blades here. They're about 25 thousandths thick. They're, they're not that thin. They're not that difficult to weld. But gapping it, even an eighth of an inch on one end, no gap on the other, no tacks, just welding it out, will demonstrate how it wants to close up because of the shrinkage stresses of metal. It's a fundamental principle is that weld metal, and any metal, even if it's not quite melted, once it heats up and cools off, things shrink. Now how does that affect how you would weld something, well the direction of travel is really what controls that. It shrinks in the direction of the weld, the direction of travel. See there's no gap there anymore. Now, something everybody can relate to is lacing up work boots. If you're not careful it gets too tight as you go and it's uncomfortable. That's because of each each time you lace it stresses accumulate and that's the same thing with a weld as it progresses along a joint. Now if you've got a, a box like this, a rectangle, and you've got everything square and everything tacked up then just welding from the inside to the out, the direction of travel makes a huge difference in keeping something square. So just starting on the inside and welding to the outside is like probably the main thing. If you just do that, it really doesn't have a huge effect whatever you weld after that. Inside or outside first, you'll pretty much stay square because the thing's rigid, it's all tacked up. Really, it's hard for it to go anywhere, but on something really big, or sometimes you have to weld something in a free state, where you don't have things tacked up in a box like this, you got to weld it in a free state, and it's allowed to move. Then you have to really be careful, and you kind of like you kind of have to pre-place it so that it will move and be square when you're finished. This is my friend Roy Crumrine doing this little demonstration for us today. You might have noticed the word "crummy" written on his TIG glove, and that's that's the reason for that. But the first thing the first thing Roy's going to do is get a couple of tacks here on the outside, just a couple of little quick burst tacks with no filler metal. This is stainless steel, stainless steel square tubing of roughly an eighth of an inch wall. And he's going to tack it up with it out of square this way, like where there's about a one sixteenth gap in five or six inches on the square. And he's going to get a couple of tacks there. It's very easy to pull it in to get that thing square like this. It's very difficult to pull it the other way. So he's going to start off with it out of square by roughly 1 16th inch or 1.6 millimeter. And then the sequence of welding also makes a huge difference here. So the first thing Roy's going to do is weld in this direction just like I did earlier on the on the box. I'm using a Pyrex number 8 cup here. No no reason really other than it seems to illuminate the whole area and you know it makes it fun to watch. Normally normally Roy his go-to cup is a number eight regular old standard pink gas lens cup. All right, next, next, just going downhill here on the outside, continuing that that seam. He's got the filler metal in his hand in case he needs to add a dab here if, if something keyholes out, but with a good fit, it, it just doesn't really need any. tapering off nice and nice on the end to not leave a crater hole. And at this point it's time to put a square on it and see where we stand. About where, where we started. It's still out of square a little bit to the outside. That's a good thing. Very easy to pull it inboard. Hard to pull it the other way. So now Roy's going to make the other weld on the, on the diagonal piece and he's going to swap directions this time. More than one way to do this. This is just this is just a technique that Roy has found works for him. Keeping a good tight arc, dabbing roughly once per second, keeping the hot tip of that 
wire in the argon shielding makes things go a lot better. I was at Roy's shop filming this clip, this part of this little video, and some of it I clipped in from my shop, but I couldn't help but think to myself just how easy he makes this stuff look. I always learn something when I watch Roy. All right, the last thing is welding inside here, and that's what's going to pull it to, to make it square. When you're welding on the inside, this, that has a tendency, not only is it going to draw a little bit in the direction of travel, but in this case, it can't really draw much there anymore because all the welds are done. Everything's locked in, but it will pull uh, in the direction of where the weld is. So it's going to pull this thing square. And there's my little attempt to mock up Roy's awesome welding just to make the uh, video more instructional. About seven to ten seconds of post flow will maintain that good color. And that's done. Now it's just time to put the square on it and see how we did. But the one thing you have to re really remember is that what, what, you're, what you get when, you, when that metal's still hot is not what you will get once it cools off. So don't be premature thinking you need to draw something over. You need to wait. In this case, it just pulled over to almost being square in about a minute or two. And if it, if it doesn't quite pull over, you can speed it up a little bit. In this case, he's using Roy's using a little can of this Dust Buster stuff that you would use on a computer keyboard. And localized cooling here on stainless steel does, metallurgically does not hurt stainless steel a bit to speed cool it. And this wasn't even all that hot. It's not like he's dunking, dunking it in a bucket of water when it's red hot. It's just localized cooling a little bit. Just a, a trick of the trade to help pull it over. And if it doesn't, if it still doesn't do it, if it still needs to come more, which in this case it's pretty darn close right there, but you can turn the can over and get a little, a little cold shot there with the liquid and that really, that really pulls it. All right, well, I want to thank Roy for helping me film this video. And also, I want to thank you for watching. I know you got a lot of choices out there of other channels. I appreciate you spending time on my channel. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.